So today we'll see uh, design of riveted joints, right? We have already seen design of welded joints and design of bolted joints, right? So this riveted joints comes under uh, permanent joints, right? Actually, you are having this uh, classification as permanent and detachable. So permanent means uh, cannot be disassembled without damaging the uh, parts, right? which is joined with this kind of joint right and this detachable means it can be disassembled right without damaging the parent parts which they are joining right so bolted joints comes under this detachable joint right while this welded and riveted joint comes under this category right so now uh, if we see uh, how actually these limited joints are uh, being uh, uh, manufactured or are being performed right so for that as you can see in the figure uh, you will have this Yeah, so as it is uh, shown in this figure A, right, you will have uh, this head uh, residing on this backup bar, right, and these two are the plates which is being joined with the help of this rivet. So, this uh, shank is having uh, one, one end, uh, this shank is having head at its one end and this is known as point once it is going to be formed, right with the help of this die it can also be manual or automatic right it can be manual or uh, automatic right hammer right so uh, we will see actually how what is the or, or what should be the length of this uh, particular shank by looking at this it is definitely this t1 plus t2 plus uh, some of this distance right so actually length of shank length of shank is equal to this t1 plus t2 plus a right let us say this distance is a this a generally lies between 0.7b to 1.3 times t where this t is nothing but the diameter of this shank right so this is how this uh, riveted or uh, this riveting operation is being carried out right here you can have manual hammer or automatic hammer automatic hammer may be operated with pneumatic pressure right so this is how this uh, riveting operation is uh, going to be carried out right so then uh, there are various types of uh, rivet heads Right, as it is uh, mentioned here, the snap head rivet, pan head rivet, countersunk, flat head, and this half countersunk, these all are going to be used as per the requirement of the uh, application or as per suited uh, to different uh, application. Right, because every time this, uh, this head which is coming out of the plate is not advisable, so this kind of this countersunk head rivet is also preferable because it will sit inside the sheet right like this you will have your uh, sheet right and uh, in this uh, this particular countersunk hole this uh, rivet head will sit inside so it will be flushed right so like this you will have your uh, rivet head inside this sheet right so this way uh, as per the different applications this different types of head are being used right and then length of shank as we have seen this t1 plus t2 or t1 plus t1 plus a right then there are different types of this riveted joint right 
left joint and bird joints right left joint means uh, in this particular case you will have one plate over the other and both will be provided that uh, hole right through which the rivet shank will be passed and then from the upper side as this is known as the point right we have seen just now so it will be formed with the help of uh, a manual hammer or pneumatic hammer right and uh, here in the sides of this particular uh, this sheet uh, the one operation is being carried out that is known as caulking and fullering this also we will see what is this caulking and fullering and why they are being carried out in the derivated joints right but uh, from uh, this particular uh, uh, types of joints this is lab joint where you are having these sheets one over the other and uh, this D is nothing but uh, the shank diameter right and here this particular thing is known as pitch so some of the terminologies are there in this figure right so this is known as pitch this pitch is as you can see in this figure the distance from one center to other center along the uh, same row right so this is how uh, this particular distance is known as pitch well this M is nothing but margin so margin is nothing but distance of the center of the rivet from the edge if this may be the edge of one of the sheets so this margin is nothing but distance of rivet, uh, that rivet center from the edge and this is generally of the order of 1.5 times shank diameter right and this is transverse pitch pt is transverse pitch actually this b and c shows a specific type of uh, this lab joint here it is known as chain and this is known as zigzag right so these are two uh, different types so in chain riveting you will have this uh, transfer pitch where in the zigzag this kind of this diagonal pitch or diameter pitch is uh, diagonal pitch is uh, mentioned as pd right so like this you will have different terminologies in this uh, riveted joints right and uh, apart from this uh, as uh, you can see in this figure right bending of plates also take place in case of this lab joint right how bending of plate uh, takes place is mentioned here that this uh, this force p is acting right on both the sheets right so it is going to generate a, a couple right because they are equal and opposite and uh, it is acting at a distance of t because here also it is t by 2 here also it is t by 2 so the couple generated is actually this force into the thickness so it will try to bend this so many times this is not advisable right so uh, in that case uh, butt joints are uh, preferred where this uh, is very uh, high this is a very high magnitude and it may cause damage right so in that case uh, this butt joints are preferred so in case of uh, butt joints uh, a strap is being used because in case of butt joints two plates are uh, placed side by side as you can see here this plate A and plate B are placed uh, side by side and then uh, one strap is uh, there above it right so uh, through that strap this both the plates will be joined right so <coughs> here actually this uh, is single strap right and in case of that figure b you can see there is double strap so here you are having strap here as well as here above and below of the plates which are being joined here this is plate 2 right and this is plate 1 right so here this plate 1 and plate 2 are having this double strap butt joint because above and below both places uh, the straps are being used right so uh, this is how uh, you will have uh, this uh, single strap butt joint and double strap butt joint and here also chain and zigzag pattern is there right in the figure as you can see in the figure which is mentioned on the right side right here you can have this chain and zigzag type uh, patterns are mentioned for butt joint also right and single and double strap you now uh, it is obvious right from these figures so now apart from this 
now again uh, the important thing is how uh, this particular weights are going to be feel under which uh, forces and which stresses uh, they are going to uh, undergo when it will in, it will be in operation right so for that as uh, it is mentioned in this above figure there are various types of uh, stresses generated in the figure uh, in the rivets right the first is the shear so as uh, we can see in this uh, figure a when this force is applied like this then there will be a shear in the shank of the rivet as it is uh, clearly uh, visible in this figure apart from that the tensile figure of plate right this may also uh, take place right now tensile figure is because of uh, this uh, particular uh, perpendicular area to this plate right so if uh, you are having your plate right like this let us say if this is your plate right then here yeah, this particular area right it is perpendicular to this force right right so here uh, this uh, particular cross section right of plate will undergo uh, this tensile uh, stress right because tensile stress is this force upon area and area will be here if you see area is uh, this width of the plate and thickness of the plate but the uh, least area will be in the region of this rivet right so that least area will be this w minus the diameter of the rivet right into thickness so we will see all this uh, uh, how uh, or what are the magnitude of stresses generated right so here this tensile failure of plate also can take place right similarly crushing of uh, this plate right by rivet so in that also crushing of uh, this particular plate will take place because compressive stresses are generated by that rivet shank and for that also area will be the diameter of rivet into the thickness of the plate right and there will be some that crushing stress so this crushing strength can be given with this dt into sigma c so we'll see all this so these are the different uh, things which we need to consider while we are designing this rivets right and then figure d and e we are having this uh, shear failure of uh, plate by rivet and the steering of margin but this uh, two are not that uh, severe so most of the times the things we are going to consider during the designing of rivet is the first three cases which we have seen that shear failure of rivet tensile failure of this plates and crushing failure of uh, this plate by rivet so if you see all of uh, those three one by one then first is the shear failure in rivet so as you can see in figure a your this shear load can be given by pi by 4 t square tau right and here you will have this n which is going to represent the number of rivet number of rivets per pitch length right so you know what is pitch length so in case of single rivet n will be 1 in case of double rivet n will be 2 right so in case of uh, that single rivet n will be 1 in case of double rivet it is 2 and in case of triple rivet it is 3 so you know single rivet double rivet and triple rivet right it is uh, according to the number of rows on that uh, particular joint whatever we are using right so for example if we go and see this that here this is double rivet right so and this is your pitch length so for pitch length here you are having two rivets in case of single rivet for pitch length you are having only one rivet right this is half the diameter this is half the diameter so only one rivet is there along the pitch length so and if it is a uh, triple rivet then one more row is there so in that case that number of rivet will be 3 so this is how you will decide 
right number of rivets now apart from this one more uh, important thing is uh, the types of shear under which your rivet is whether it is single shear or double shear so this is applicable for single shear right this is applicable for single shear as it is mentioned in figure a the rivet is under single shear but here if we go for this double strap right as it is mentioned in figure b in case of this double strap actually uh, the shank is going to undergo double shear because here also there is a shear and here also you can find the shear so in case of double shear it will change to uh, this 2 into pi by 4 d squared to tau into n will remain as it is right whether it is a uh, single double or triple uh, riveting right so uh, this is how uh, we will have this shear failure in rivets right so once this is clear shear failure then we can go to the tensile failure so in uh, tensile failure as we have already uh, discussed that this tensile strength or load bearing capacity in tension can be given by this area into that uh, particular shear stress or shear strength of the material of the plate. So here area will be W minus T into T right into sigma T. So here uh, this particular sigma T is actually uh, the tensile strength per uh, uh, whatever that pitch length So this is how uh, this, uh, what I can say, the strength and tension of the plate can be uh, decided, right? So here actually uh, in that case, uh, we can also write uh, this as uh, not W minus D, but actually P minus D, I guess, right? Because here it is mentioned as P, right? As pitch length. So it can also be mentioned as this P minus T into T into sigma T, right? As you can see here, it is mentioned as this P, pitch length, right? So this is how uh, this tensile strength can be calculated. Similarly, crushing strength can also be calculated. And uh, for that, what is the area as we already discussed? This D into thickness of plate into this crushing strength of the material and this number of rivet per pitch length right so this is how uh, this uh, crushing strength can be calculated right so it also sometimes enlarges the that shank hole right so this is how there are various types of uh, failure right and various uh, strength of that particular uh, plate and rivet right so Yeah, so once uh, you know all those uh, shear strength, tensile strength and crushing strength, then you can calculate the efficiency of riveted joint. So what efficiency of uh, riveted joint is, it is the lowest of whatever we have calculated that PS, PT or PC right? uh, divided by the strength of the plate without uh, being riveted right so that is that width of the plate into thickness of plate into shear strength of plate so this is how actually you will have your uh, what it is efficiency this w can be also replaced with p as we have uh, already discussed previously while uh, looking at the tensile strength right so this is how you can calculate the efficiency of riveted joint right then this caulking and fullering is there right so in caulking and uh, fullering as uh, we have already uh, discussed right that this uh, riveted joints are being used in the boilers and pressure vessels right 
then it is very uh, pressure versus it, right? So it is advisable to have leak proof joint, right? So in order to ensure this uh, leak proof joints, uh, what we have to do is we have to uh, perform certain operation as this is uh, mentioned in the figure. So if we first discuss about the corking operation, then this corking is performed when uh, the sheet thickness is greater than or equal 6 mm. Right. So what they are going to do is they are going to provide this uh, particular uh, what we can say draft of this angle of 70 to 75 at the end of this play right? and then uh, this hammering will be carried out with this corking tool. So this corking tool will have a certain thickness right, as per uh, the application and then it will be hammered and it will be ensure that this joint is a uh, leak proof joint. It will be hammered throughout the circumference of this plates, right, in case of the spoilers or pressure vessels, right. And uh, in case of uh, this uh, fullering, this fullering tool is uh, as the thickness of the material the, or thickness of the plate. That is the difference between this caulking and fullering. Otherwise, here also this hammering will be carried out throughout the circumference of this plates. But uh, this fullering tool is equal to the thickness of the plate which we are joining with the help of this uh, riveted joints. So that is the difference uh, between caulking and fullering operation, right? And with this uh, basic uh, idea about this uh, rivets and the strength of riveted joints, you can opt for this particular problem. It is simple, right? So here the problem says a brick uh, band attached to the hinge by means of a riveted joint shown in figure determine the size of the rivets needed for the load of 10 kN also determine the width of the band the permissible stresses for the band and rivets in tension shear and compression are 80, 60 and 120 Nm per square respectively Assume margin is 1.5 times uh, shank diameter and transverse pitch as this that normal pitch. You find the pitch of rivets. So uh, here, first if you look at the data provided, then the data given is this load as 10 kN. Right then, this thickness of plate as 3 mm, then tensile strength is 80 newton per mm square, and shear strength as <coughs> 60 newton per mm square, and uh, this crushing strength as 120 newton per mm square. Right, so uh, with this, uh, you can first calculate the diameter of a rivet by this uh, shear strength and uh, what you can say, crushing strength, right? So, uh, this recorded videos of previous sessions and all will be uh, actually communicated with you I guess right we will see about this at the end right so for now uh, let us uh, calculate this so you can start with uh, considering the shear stress right and uh, uh, the load needs to be weird is 10 kilo newton so in that uh, particular case you can calculate the diameter of rivet and similarly for crushing strength also or compressive strength also you can calculate the diameter of rivet. So higher of uh, those two will then be utilized for calculating the width of this uh, particular plate. Right. So are you getting what I am saying? Hello. 
sir the width and thickness are not given even diameter see uh width and uh, thickness thickness is given as 3 mm right thickness is oh, yes. diameter diameter you have to calculate right we have seen those uh, equations or the relations for this ps pc and pt right so first you can start with this ps what is ps in this case can anyone say 2 into pi by 4 d square 2 into pi by 4 d square into sigma s Actually, there are uh, four number of rivets are there, right? So n is equal to two, right, sir? Uh, yes, I guess as per what we have seen, it should be two. But here, I guess we need to go by total number of uh, rivets, right? Because all of them are under that single shear, right? So we'll go by that uh, total number of rivets. Right here, we will not use that uh, particular criteria, right? So if we go by the total number of rivet, it means total number of rivets are four, and then the area is pi by four t square, right? Into shear strength is given. So this is the area, right? And stress also we have considered. So it should be equated to the load which needs to be bear, that is ten kilo newton. So in this only Excuse me. unknown is diameter. Yes. Sir, sorry. Sir, actually, uh, all the three loads will be ten only, sir. Yes, yes, yes. We are we are uh, designing rivet for that uh, load only. This ten kilometer only. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So, what is the diameter? Anyone? Is it seven point three mm? Yeah, it is almost uh, about that seven point three mm. You can round it off to eight mm. Now you can go for that crushing strength. That is again four times t into t into sigma c. Sigma c is given, right? One twenty, okay, which is equated to again ten and ten raised to three. So this will give again diameter or required diameter to resist this uh, crushing stress. So that is six point. Nine four mm. Yeah, correct. So this is six point nine four, or you can approximate it to seven mm. So if you look at this, uh, then this eight mm is higher, right? Or in order to resist this uh, shear failure, eight mm of this uh, rivet diameter is required. So we will go with this higher dimension. So, if we consider that the required diameter of rivet as eight mm, then in case of uh, calculating the thickness, we are having this tensile strength equal to W minus two D, right? 
into t into sigma t here we are considering for full plate only right so for full plate if you see the least uh, cross sectional area will be w minus 2d if you see in this figure right then the least diameter will be or sorry least area will be uh, this uh, sorry this way this full width minus this two times the diameter right this thing and this d right so the least area is w minus 2d so based on that least area we will find that what is the width required because we already have thickness right so this least area is w minus 2d into t is it correct Do you get this? Yes, sir. Sir, but W is not given us. So W you have to calculate, right? So here 10 into 10 is to 3. W you have to calculate. Diameter you will take that 8. So, but actually, uh, we need to compare between all the three, no, sir. Yeah. Uh, crushing, yeah. tension, and that is that is uh, true. But in that case, whenever uh, that uh, that problem statement is like that or requirement is like that in that case you have to calculate all this P S P C or P T but here you are designing the other way you are asked to bear the load of 10 kN right and based on that you need to come up with the dimensions of the plate right so in this case you have to uh, consider uh, like this right as we are uh, proceeding here so this is given as A T sigma T right So this will give you width. So what is width? Fifty-seven point six seven. Fifty-seven point six seven. Yeah. So almost you can consider it as sixteen. So once you have this width and diameter, width of plate and diameter of shank, right? Both are with you. Then you are asked to calculate the pitch also. Right, or you are asked to define the pitch also. Pitch is this uh, dimension which is mentioned here. Right, this is pitch. So, you have this uh, W with you. M you can approximate as 1.5 times T as it is mentioned here. So, M is equal to 1.5 times T. So, what is this 1.5 times T? 8 is our shank diameter, right? So 1.5 in D will be what? 12? Um. Yeah. Right, so if you approximate this 12 to 15, right, let us say margin we are keeping as 15. So by looking at this figure, your W is equal to P plus 2 into M. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. So, this uh, in this uh, W is 16. Right. P is uh, you need to calculate. And M as we have calculated is 15 mm. So, 2 into 15. So, this will give you pitch as 30 mm. Correct? Yes, right? sir. So this is how you can calculate the pitch and this width of the plate and the diameter of our shank, right? So this is how you can calculate this. Now once you are done with this, the next is uh, here also eccentrically loaded uh, riveted joints. So this eccentrically loaded riveted joints also will have primary shear and secondary shear, right? So, uh, I guess if you recall, it will be similar to that bolted joint and uh, riveted, sorry, bolted joint and welded joint. Can anyone tell what is this primary shear? That is the total load applied divided by number of rivets, right? Here if you say two rivets, then it will be P1 dash is equal to P2 dash is equal to P by 2. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right. So, if you say uh, this simple example, if you have this two rivets and if this bracket is having 
extension and load is applied as P at a distance E and then this P into E will be uh, the moment which is transferred to the centroid G right. So in this case this primary shear will be this right and what will be the secondary shear P1 double dash or P2 double dash what is this can anyone tell anyone moment divided by the square R1 upon R1 square plus R2 square, something like this, right? P E R2 upon R1 square plus R2 square. Right, R1 and R2 will be this distance of uh, the center to the uh, this centroid. So R1 and R2 will be like this. Is it correct? Hello. Yes. And yes. the direction of force will be opposing the direction of moment transfer to the centroid. So on the upward side it will be like this and in the lower side it will be like this. Is it correct? Okay. Okay then we can move to the next problem right so here in this problem a bracket is attached to a vertical column by means of four identical rivets right so here the eccentric force of 55 kilonewton is acting right and the distance is uh, mentioned as 100 determine the diameter of rivets if the permissible shear stress is 60 newton per mm square so now uh, from this again you can calculate this uh, so primary shear again huh so akshay see uh, primary shear is uh, simply whatever load is uh, acting right this 25 kilo newton is going to generate a shear in this particular shank diameter right so it is uh, simple like this particular force total is 25 and uh, it will be going to act p by 4 at each rivet so this is the force right so uh, this force is going to generate that uh, shear right so this shear if we consider the tau then pi by 4 d square is the area right so like this uh, you will have uh, what we can say primary shear force which is going to generate this uh, stress okay are you getting Akshay hello yes yes I'm getting okay okay so here also this primary uh, what we can say primary shear force in all this uh, reverse P1 P2 P3 and P4 will be equal to P by 4 25 kilo newton by 4 will give you 6250 yes or no Hello. Yes, sir. Right. So now uh, for this P1 and P4, secondary shear will be same, right? Because they are at the same distance, right? Because C into R, right? Upon uh, that R1 square plus R2 square plus R3 square plus R4 square this R is 150 right for uh, P1 and P4 while for P2 and P3 
this R will be 50. So it is clear that secondary shear force is the highest for uh, this rivet 1 and rivet 4. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So, uh, can you calculate the C is nothing but force into the eccentricity. So, can you calculate this? Sir? Yes? Uh, sir, please explain one more P1 double dash and P2 double dash. Secondary shear. So, the secondary shear is as uh, we have discussed earlier that this uh, P into E will be transferred to this CG, right? P into E. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, because of uh, this uh, particular moment which is transferred to the CG, there is a force generated which is going to generate shear in this rivet. And the yes. secondary force will be in the direction which is going to generate moment opposite to P cross E. So, in the upper side of this uh, CG, the direction of force will be like this, which is going to oppose this moment, uh, sir. moment P cross E, while for the below one, it is in this direction. So, again, oppose this P cross E. So, this is how you can have secondary uh, shear force. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you can uh, now calculate this secondary shear force for rivet 1 and 4 and for rivet 2 and 3. For 1 and 4, 7500 okay, newton. Okay. And for here 1 and 4 it is 7500 newton. Okay. And for 2 and 3? 2500. Okay. Correct. So as we are having all the values of forces now, you can see the maximum forces are acting at 1 and 4, right? So we can take resultant at 1 and 4, right? At 1 or at 4, right? So, uh, and this forces are making angle of 90 degree, right? Because at 1, this is 90 degree. At all the places, it is actually 90 degree only, right? So if forces are making an angle of 90 degree, then the resultant force at 1 will be under root of this P1 dash square plus P1 double dash square. Correct? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, so yes sir. Right. Yeah. So, resultant force will be what? 6250 square plus 7500 square, which will give you Sir, nine seven six two. Nine seven six two. Point eight one. Point eight one newton. Yes, sir. This is how you will have your force, right? So once you have uh, the force acting, then you can calculate the diameter of the shank of the rivet, right? Because you also have the uh, shear strength of the material, right? Of which these rivets are made, right? And force you have calculated this resultant force that is the maximum force. So once you have this, then pi by 4 d square tau. So if you use this, then you will have this 9762.81 is <coughs> equal to pi by 4 d square. Tau is given as 60. So it will give you the diameter of rivet. So what is the diameter of rivet? 15.4 mm. Okay, it is almost 14.4 mm. So, which can be considered as 15 mm. Correct? 
<laughs> okay, so this is how you can calculate uh, this uh, diameter of rivet. Now we will see some of the previous year's question. So here the question is a bracket shown in figure is rigidly mounted on wood using four rivets. Each rivet is 6 mm in diameter and has effective length of 12 mm. Okay. Then direct shear stress in the most heavily loaded rivet is. Can you try this yourself? Hello. Yes, sir. Give a minute. Ah, please try and tell me what is your answer. Direct shear means the primary shear, right? Is it 4.9? No, no. Eight point eight, sir. Yes. So anyone else? Eight point eight. Yes, correct. Right? Because why? Because here the primary shear stress is 1000 by 4. It is distributed among 4 rivets. So, the primary shear stress is 250 Newton and because of that direct shear or primary shear stress is nothing but this 250 Newton divided by this pi by 4 d square. d is 6 into 10 raise to minus 3. Right? Correct? So, when you are going to, uh, actually you can keep it in Newton per mm square only, right? So, after calculation, you will find that it is coming 8.8 megapascal. Is it correct? Yes. Okay. So, this is how you can have... Sir, uh, when do we actually take it in mm and meters? Actually, here I guess you can directly consider it in uh, what you can say, mm only. Yes, sir. Actually, even I took it in uh, meter and I got a very big answer. Actually, it is in uh, yeah, mm only. Here it is required to take it in mm only. So, 4 into 9, sorry, will be 36 and 250 by 9 pi will give you this 8.8. .8. Is it correct? Here no need to go for meter. Correct? Okay, sir. Um, yes. hello? Yes. Sir, uh, what, uh, what is meant by effective length 12 mm? Uh, is it the shape length? Sorry? The effective length of 12 mm, is it, sh is it saying about shank length or? Maybe, yes. But here, this, it is superfluous data that uh, 12 mm is maybe that shank length only, which we have seen, right? Like this will be the head and this will be that shank length, which is going to be flushed, right? After this two may be your sheets, right? T1 and T2. Actually, it is flushed to that point only, right? And here then it will be converted to point as we have seen. So here this effective length may be that T1 plus T2 plus A what we have discussed as shank length. But for this particular problem this data is superfluous. Okay. 
Okay, sir. Okay, so here you need not to go for converting it into meter, right? Because newton per mm square itself is mega Pascal only. Right, so let us go to the next one. Here, next question is a single riveted lap joint of two similar plates as shown in the figure below has the following symmetrical and material details. Width of plate is 200 mm, thickness of plate is 5 mm, number of rivets are 3, diameter of the rivet is 10 mm, diameter of rivet hole is 11 mm. Allowable tensile stress of the plate is 200 mega Pascal. Allowable shear stress of rivet is 100 mega Pascal. Mm. And allowable bearing stress of the rivet sigma C is 150 mega Pascal. Now, if the rivets are designed to avoid crushing failure, the maximum permissible load in kilonewton is, and if the plates are designed to avoid the tearing failure, the maximum permissible load in mm, kilonewton. I guess both of this you can do, right? based on what we have discussed is crushing load and the steering load and all can you try this by yourself hello yes sir. Uh, please uh, try this and let me know what are you getting so here the bearing stress uh, is it is it to be taken for the crushing stress yeah, yeah, this bearing stress is nothing but this crushing stress. Anyone got the answer? Sir, for crushing, usually we take a diameter of rivet or holes. Yeah, we should take diameter of the rivet for crushing. Oh, okay, sir. For first question, option C. Yes. Correct. Anyone else got the same? Sir? Yes? Sir, where can we get this recorded lecture of today's class? Actually, it will be shared with you, I guess. Uh, this uh, lectures are already being uploaded to YouTube channels. So, this link may be shared or some folder link may be shared where this all videos are being uploaded. Right? So, you will be able to access this recorded session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. In the actually on gate portal if you go to phase one then on phase one already some of the links are shared right and in that actually if you go to that channel these videos are also being uploaded to the same channel okay sir hmm. yeah anyone got the answer for second question Yeah. So let us see one by one how this uh, answer is been achieved, right? So for the first one, the crushing load, 
is as we have decided it will be this t t sigma c right and we are having three arabids so it will be multiplied with this three so here in case of crushing load you are going to consider the rivet diameter because this crushing stress is also of your rivet so you need to take care right while calculating because here two different things are there plate and rivet so while going for crushing stress as we are having this or we are discussing about the strength of the rivet we will go with the rivet diameter so this rivet diameter is 10 thickness of the plate is 5 mm and the sigma c is 150 mega pascal right and this 3 so if you go with uh, the calculation and if you simplify here this 150 newton per mm square will be nullified with this both the dimension in mm right so it will be 150 into 150 right right 10 into 5 into 3 will be 150. Here already 150 uh, is there. So basically, uh, this uh, 15 into 15 into 100. So 15 into 15 will be 225, and into 100 will be this. So uh, this way you will come or end up with this 22.5 kilonewton. Now, if you go for this uh, tearing failure, then this this particular tearing strength is given by W minus 3D into T into sigma T. Now here W is given as 200 <coughs> minus 3 into this T will be the rivet hole diameter in the plate that is 11 mm. Right? Because we are considering the strength of plate. So 200 minus 3 into 11 into thickness is into uh, this sigma t is tensile uh, stress allowable tensile stress of plate is 200 so here 200 minus 33 is what 167 right into this 200 into 5 will be 1000 so straight away you will get this 167 Kilo Newton. Is it clear? Hello. Is it clear? Anyone? Yes. Right. So we can go to the next one. So here. Uh, the question says a horizontal plate has been joined to a vertical post using four rivets arranged as shown in the figure. Now the magnitude of the load on the worst loaded rivet. Right. So here you need to calculate primary and secondary shear force acting on each of the rivet and then you need to calculate the resultant forces on each rivet. You need to identify which rivet is having the highest load acting on it. And then based on that you have to find the diameter of the rivet. Is it clear? Hello. Yes, sir. So, please proceed and let me know what are you getting.
So it will be something like this, right? Yes or no? Correct? Sir, the answer is uh, 5 and 7 and 5 and Newton. Sir, is it 180 Newton? Mm, no, no. One, one decimal place is not correct. There is something wrong. Because it's when it's sorry, it's 39 Newton. Yeah, it will be around that. So here R is what? What is your R? 20 root 2, right? Because R is this 20 square plus 20 square. This is 90 degree. This is your R. Correct? Hello? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. So it will be PE upon 4 R. Where P is 400, E is 500, 4, R is 20 root 2. So it will give you secondary force. What is that? <coughs> 1767.76. Yeah, it is around 1767.76. <coughs> Now, this, uh, if we find resultant, then 1 and 4 are worse included, right? So, for that, <coughs> even dash square, even double dash square, to 2 P1 dash, even double dash, cos 45. <coughs> Sorry. So, <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> what is the <coughs> what is the answer now? Sir, it is uh, one eight So here, 
<coughs> a bracket is attached to a vertical column by means of <coughs> two identical rivets u and v separated by a distance of 2a <coughs> which is 100 mm right as shown in figure the permissible shear stress of the rivet material is 50 mega pascal if a load <coughs> of uh, p is equal to 10 kilo newton is applied at an eccentricity e is equal to 3 root 7a the minimum cross sectional area of each of the rivets to avoid failure <coughs> you can try this right you can find the primary and <coughs> secondary shear force Near the angle between primary and secondary will be <coughs> will be ninety degree <coughs> because P U dash and P V dash will be in this direction while the moment you are transferring is this P cross E <coughs> at this point G. So secondary shear force will be opposite to this moment, this way. <laughs> Pu double dash, and this way. Pu double dash. Is it correct? <coughs> yes or no? So direct shear will be upwards. Sorry. Uh, direct shear will be upwards. If we consider the reaction due to that external force, then it will be like this. Okay. Anyway, <coughs> angle is 90 degrees. So, this P U dash, P V dash is equal to P by 2. It is 10 kilo newton by 2, right? 5 kilo newton. And P U double dash and P V double dash will have same magnitude because distance is same. So P E four R upon <coughs> here two R square, right? Sorry. <coughs> because R square plus R square. So it is P E upon two R. P e is ten kilometer. E is three root seven A. A is what? <coughs> Fifty. And R is what? R is again 50 right because this distance 2a right between 2 so here to this this distance will be a which is 50 correct yes or no hello anyone yes sir yeah so what is secondary shear force So 2 into 50 is square, no? No, actually 1 R is get cancelled na, here. So P upon 2 R only. Na. <coughs> this this 50 is not R. This 50 is E. It is in the expression of E. Okay. Yes. Right? 3 root 7 A. So this A is 50. It is not this R as 50. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So... Tell me what is the secondary shear force? Thirty-nine point six eight kilometer almost. So now resultant force, let us say P will be P square dash plus P double dash square. Right? <coughs> because cos ninety is zero. So resultant will be this. So what is resultant? <coughs> forty thousand. Sorry, forty thousand. Okay. So this is forty kilometer. 
right so now <coughs> this we have got for single rivet right so let us go for uh, single rivet only so if force is 40 kilo newton right then what is the area required right so if force is 40 kilo newton then it can be equated to the stress into area stress into area stress is given as 50 mega pascal right <coughs> so area will be equal to this 40 kilo newton divided by that 50 mega pascal so now can you tell me the area 800 800 mm square that will be the area okay so each of the rivet right so each of the rivet will be of 800 mm square so 800 may be your <coughs> answer right 